welcome back to Interview with the Juggalo, starring CPN. And for the first part of the interview, you just went into the mind of a child's play ninja. Hopefully, uh, y'all enjoyed that. Now, for this interview, we're going to talk about the rivalry between CPN and Crazy McCormick. Now, okay, so CPN, tell us exactly what happened between you and Crazy. And, you know, how this all escalated between you and Crazy on Blog Talk. Well, it was a while ago. It was all like, you could say the whole story goes or whatever. Mm -hmm. The way it goes is, me and Crazy have been choking with each other back and forth. You know, who shot first, Hunter, Greedo. It was a joke because they joke like that in Clerks, too. There's a part where the dude goes into the restaurant and he's talking shit to Randall and Dante. He goes, you know... I'm pretty sure when you two are arguing over who shot first, Hawn or Greedo, you know, you guys still find time to make fun of somebody. You know, I thought that was really funny. So, you know, me and Crazy used to always, like, Crazy would always be like, Greedo shot first, and I used to always be like, Hawn shot first. Well, in, in this one conversation, I was at it with a private lead, just me and him on the phone. I was like, well, you do know that. You know, you know it's funny? I mean, we both know Hawn shot first. And Crazy's like, no, Greedo shot first. And so we argued with it slightly, but it wasn't huge. <laughs> and then we were on Blog Talk Radio, and Jersey ended up talking about the whole Hot and Greedo thing. And I was like, dude, seriously, fucking everyone knows Hot shot first. And Crazy was with the Greedo shot first. And we ended up started arguing, and, you know, we, I mean, you start an argument when it's something, over something stupid, it happens, and then, like, you start getting pissed off after a while. You know, mm -hmm. it, it just happens. It happens to a lot of people. You know, a lot of people are calling you stupid for this situation, but I say this happens to a lot of people. And uh, so I have we have this heated ass argument, and he has said, uh, crazy thing, you know what? You have this hard fucking head, and you just want to accept shit. That's probably why Turbo left your fucking ass. That's why I bad to wanted to go back home. And it was like, all right, motherfucker. Now you cross the fucking line. So, from, from that point on, it was no, no longer a joke. It was really like, just that phrase just flashed in my mind. This shit just got fucking real. You know what I mean? We say that at work a lot of times as a joke. Like, oh my God, it's about to get real up in here. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that, I mean, that's how it was. It was like, okay, this just got real. You know, like, what's up? And like, I... You know, people like, like to attack my personal life and people like to attack my relationships or whatever. So they know nothing about what's going on. I have all these people sit there claiming that I have absolutely no fucking friends in real life. I mean, I turned the joke around on them. If you ever saw that video where my friends were kicking my ass the whole time. Oh, yeah. That shit. Yeah. I mean, even fuck like Greeno, he tried to actually call me out on that like it was some serious shit. And you'd be like, yeah, you have friends. That's why we call them kick your ass in your video. How do you explain that? And I'm like, oh, my God, you're, you're a fucking retard. you got retardation. But, yeah, that's because that wasn't an obvious joke or anything. You know, but so shit got real. And, I mean, the argument got fucking heated. <laughs> what people don't know is off fucking radio and stuff, you know, argument kept on. Like, what the fuck is your problem? Why would you take stupid shit like that. And it was, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And, I mean, I was pretty much like, dude, look, fuck the ball for that shit because that was uncalled for. I didn't say nothing about you, you know. Why would you bring that? And so pretty much I was saying this, like, I was trying to hit him up and he was just ignoring me, you know, and stuff, trying to say some shit like, um, you know, whatever, I'm not trying to deal with this shit right now or whatever. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, like, you know, he said what he said to me. He didn't want to apologize. So I was like, okay, fine. You want to act like a badass, dude? <laughs> I will act like a badass myself. Just, just know I can do a lot worse than anyone else. You know what I mean? I am able to fuck some shit up, and I'm very willing to fuck some shit up. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. You know? And so that's what I did. Mm, so, how it works. so in this situation, it's more like... It's more like who shot first, CPN or crazy. It's more like that because 
from what people are saying. They said you started, and then people are saying crazy started it. I mean, it's like you know who shot who. Um, it's like when you said you said um, um, we all know that Han shot first, and then what you call it, then crazy talks about why trouble left you, or he says um, you know, so I can see why trouble left you, and it's mostly like who shot first, you know, like who got mad first, you know. Exactly. And a lot of people don't even know the fucking story of why me and Turbo even broke up. You know, fucking Meta Master said, I guess he did a kind of an open job making up a story uh, just to try to fuck with me, but that's a whole other situation with me and him. A lot of people don't know this, but he literally tried to leave the woman he was with and move up to fucking Virginia to be with Turbo Girl. And hmm. Turbo says, no, what the fuck are you doing? And a couple weeks later, was rolling with me. And this kind of pissed Meta Master off. You know, like, he still carries this thing like CPM stole my woman. And, you know, because I am the real Meta Master, just my ass, fuck him. You know what I'm saying? But, like, a lot of people don't even know the story of why me and her broke up. I didn't want to break up with her when me and her broke up, but that's the thing. She didn't leave me. I broke up with her. That, that's the whole thing. I broke up with Turbo Girl. Turbo Girl did not break up with me. I broke up with her. And I broke up with her because communication just wasn't happening anymore. And I pretty much figured she, if she doesn't have enough respect, like, it was the point where, like, I went for, like, almost over a week without talking to her. I mean, I text her, I called her, no answer. So what ends up happening later, well, crazy doesn't really like this, but he acted, he accidentally yards on her. I, I was talking crazy on the phone with him, it's, like, after a week of my hearing from her, and I was talking to him, he was like, oh, yeah, no. oh, by the way, like, I was talking to Turbo earlier today, and she was saying this, this, and this. And uh, we were talking about the duo and singing wrestling, whatever. And I was like, you talked to Turbo today? He's like, yeah, we talked over like an hour and a half. Like, oh, really? This bitch has been ignoring me for like a week? What the fuck? So I finally hit her up and I said, you know, you can have to fuck match my calls. You know, like, I'm supposed to be your man and shit. You know, we saw like two weeks together. Like, you know what the fuck? And she did it. Like, she answered me. I said, you know, I'm fine. Fuck it. It's over. I, I'm not going to be tied down to somebody. And but I got all these fine ass bitches around that I could be doing so with. But I'm tied down to somebody who lives on the other side of the fucking country who won't even fucking know me. You know? Like, I mean, we had the whole plans, like, like Spike, Heather are going to do it, they're going to move it together. Like, we had the whole plan, too. But, you know, me, it's just like, you know, it's not fun. You know what I mean? I mean, let's go back to Turbo today. You know, if, if the stories are true of me mistreating her and seeing her and all this other stuff, why the fuck would she still talk to me? You know, I still talk to her. I talk to her almost every day. You know, not on the phone. She maybe text messaging here. Sometimes, maybe the phone conversation. You know, she tells me. She has to tell me what's going on in her relationship life. You know, and I say, oh, well, that's cool. You know, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, so me and Turbo started out as friends. And we kind of remained that way, I guess you say. Mm-hmm. And um, we looked it up to the house, and I had arguments with her. And told her she was a dumb bitch, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, five days later, like, oh, fuck, you know, I was the asshole. Yeah, well, I was a bitch. Okay, cool, whatever. Anyway, WWF, or WWE, whatever, you know. But, oh. yeah, I just don't like when people bring this bullshit up, because none of them are fucking business. You know what I'm saying? It's like, none of them are fucking business. Oh, yeah, that's completely, un- that's understandable right there, man. And, um, and I feel you on that, you know? I mean, after what you're saying right now, and... I mean, that's personal stuff right there, and, you know, just exploiting that on the internet or anywhere, then that's not really cool, you know what I mean? Especially if it's on um, someone's relationship. I mean, that's just their relationship, you know? Yeah, exactly. And it's like, it's like he, he didn't say that shit just because he was cheated about something or whatever. Like, I think he was cheated. But he said that shit because he knew. Like, he was one of the people I called when me and her broke up. Like, he was one of the people, like, 
like, not, I didn't cry, like, not one tear left my fucking eye. But, I mean, I was fucking sad about the situation. He was, one, he was like, one of the people I thought to talk to about the situation. You know, like, man, this sucks, dude, blah, blah, blah. And I really thought this was going to go to the and this and that, but, you know, this is fucking sucks. You know, he was, like, the shoulder to fucking lean on. You know, he was like that homeboy you fucking go to and shit. For him to do that shit, I mean, I'm sorry, but there's kind of this saying that says it's easier to forgive an enemy than it is to forgive a friend. You know what I mean? And that's, that's where it's at. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, I understand what you're saying. And, um, yeah, and on to the next six questions. Um... They're all going to be yes or no. Like, I'm going to ask you, and with all honesty, you can say yes or no. Is that cool? Cool. Okay. Number one, uh, people have suggested that you might be on drugs. Is it true? No. That would be a no. Okay. Do you think you went too far to what you did to crazy? That would also be a no. Um, do, honestly, do you regret what you did to Crazy or anyone? Um, to crazy, no. I think in life I regret giving to people, but nothing crazy related, no. Oh, okay. And um, those. This was just a rumor. People saying that, um. That Amanda went on, Amanda, she went on blog talk, and uh, people said that they heard her say that you had abused Amanda. Is it true? Yes or no? I would say the plot abuse, you know. It's, um, I mean, that, that's not a clear yes or no question. Mm -hmm. It's more of uh, the plot abuse, you know what I'm saying? Like, like me, me and her, me and her got into it while we were on the phone. You know what I'm saying? But it's <laughs> what I just feel like with that situation, like me and her just got into it. You know, it's kind of like the whole crazy thing about the internal people don't know the situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They, they weren't like really aware of the situation between me and Amanda, and it just is what it is. You know? Oh yeah. I mean, it's fun. I'm concerned it was like I was justifying whatever happened. Yeah, I mean that, that, that's not the only one say on that situation. Okay, that's understandable. And um do you this next question, do you hate crazy? Like do you have a strong hate passion for crazy? Well see hate hate's a strong word. Um what I hate so funny I literally imagine I'm saying like this, when I hate somebody, I literally imagine myself in a situation like Hostile. Did you ever see that movie? And, and they're the ones tied to the chair and I'm the customer with the, with the dog tattoo on my arm, you know, type shit. Um, that's kind of what I imagine. And I don't imagine crazy that way. Uh, I don't, like, want to tie it down and, and cut the gloves off or anything and watch it scream. You know, it's, it's nothing of that nature. I don't hate them like that. It's more like a he pissed me off, and I'm teaching him a lesson and setting an example to, like, if you're going to really fuck with somebody's personal life, even if it's not the slightest degree, somebody might come back and bite you in the fucking ass. Because I've always said this. I am a, re like, I give the people what they give to me. If you punch me once, I'm going to punch you twice, and the second hit when you hit the floor, I'm going to kick you a couple times. You know what I mean? If oh, you yeah. hand me a dog, I'll try to return five to you when I do pay you back. That's the person I am. So if you fuck with my personal life, I'm going to fuck with your personal life. The only thing is, I'm going to fuck with your personal life a lot harder. Did I think his life was legal over this shit? Fuck no. I, I didn't think that was going to happen. But as far as I'm concerned, 
stuff with the bonus. I just felt like taking a bus. Like out in the fucking field to have your fucking household and the shit that goes on in your fucking household be questioned. Just like the shit is going out there, what went on with my relationships. You know what I mean? Everything I did, I did out of retaliation for something you did. Hmm. Okay, yeah, now that makes more sense. And, um, the last one, last yes or no, um, answer, um, are you going to go on with this rivalry? Like, are you going to keep on going on? Well, with it, I mean, I guess you could say it all depends on <laughs> what he does. You know what I mean? It all depends on what he does, what he says. But he has all his little homies do and all this other shit. You know, if he continues, then I will continue. You know, and just as I've shown as of, up, up to this point, continuing with me, you know, you could throw a water balloon at me, but I will throw back the fucking ocean. Mm. You know what I mean? That's that's the way I roll. Oh yeah, that's. So, if somebody's ready to drown, if the water blows out, I might get soaked, but you'll drown. You know, that's kind of my motto. Well, I must I must admit that is a great motto. So we'll take. <laughs> and uh, next question, um, what is out of this whole experience about you and Crazy, um, what is one thing you wish you could change? One thing I wish I could change? Shit. Um, fuck. I don't know. Um, I, wish, I wish I could change the fact that one of my videos got flagged down because somebody can't stand my opinion. Um, you know, I, I do. I just kind of find it funny that there's all these people that will say, like, you know, freedom of opinion and this and that. But then when I speak something somebody really doesn't like, they go on a flanking patrol. And it's like, really? Are you serious? You know? Um, so I guess that. Um, I don't really. <laughs> the people I've challenged to the debates on, like, the religious stuff, mm -hmm. I. You know, because I guess you can just kind of tied into the situation because people start getting more involved while sending in the religious videos. Mm -hmm. um, I wish some of these people would actually accept my challenge, you know, and not just jump off the fucking end and say, oh, no, well, you're just going to do this and this. You don't know what I'm going to do, you know? Like, you know, my challenge was that before that a debate to where, like, the person against me can speak for 10 minutes without me jumping in, uninterrupted, and just speak their piece. And then I will have five minutes to rebuttal their piece, uninterrupted. And then they will have five minutes to rebuttal what I've said. And then we will go to me, and I will have ten minutes to speak. And then they will have five minutes to rebuttal. And everything will all be all interrupted. Nobody's allowed to dominate the conversation or anything like that. Completely formatted to where the only... The only thing it comes down to is each person's knowledge and the way they can present it. And that is it. No overpowering, no yelling over the person or anything like that. And every time I challenge these people who, who claim to be fair and all this other stuff, they fucking back down. But every time I argued with them on Block TV, what is, uh, Block Talk Radio, what did they do? They screamed over me. And they claimed they schooled me. Of course, you seem like you schooled me. I had to get a fucking word in. I had to rebuttal for everything that fucking said. I can't go rebuttal if you don't let me speak, you know? So mm -hmm. that's the whole thing. I try to get people to a fair fight, they can't do it. Mm, yeah. yeah, I know what you're saying I right there. I wish I could change that. I wish I could change the fact that these, some of these people weren't fucking pussies and could actually fight fair. Like in, in that in that sense, in, in that aspect, in, in that area. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, next question. Um, you see, uh, Mr. Whitey's bag, or White Boy, he 
actually downloaded the podcast where it was called CPN Exposed. And what that was mainly about is when you said that you would rape, uh, I think it was rape and kill a, I think it was Crazy's or Sir, Sir Spazzer's uh, daughter. Um, say you would rape them or some shit like that. Um, do you think people went too far and say, oh, okay, you know what, that, you know what, what you said right there was pretty fucked up? Or do you think it was just like, you know, like a mind fuck thing, you know, like you say you would do it, but then in actuality, you're not really going to do it, you know? Okay, well, of course I'm not really going to do it. And this is how, this is how the whole thing was like telephone goes with the story changes. I, I never threatened to rape Crazy's children. That was the whole thing. I didn't threaten to do anything to Crazy's children. The only thing close to a threat was Crazy said, oh, you said you're going to do this to Spazzer's daughter? What are you going to do to my kids? And just to, re, just to respond to the open the challenge, what did you want me to say in an argument? Oh, I'm not going to do anything, man. So I decided to say, what I'll do to your kids would make what I said about Spazzer's daughter look like a Disney fairy tale. That was all I said. That was all I said. I, I, I didn't make any specific. I didn't, I never threatened to rape his children. As a matter of fact, the only time I said anything was that and crazy invited that, you know. It, it, but the reason I said the thing to Spazzer is a lot of people don't know this. This is why I said this to Spazzer. Spazzer is also friends with Turbo Girl. He has seen countless videos on the picture on Turbo Girl. How awesome she is and how real she is. You want to talk about hanging out with those Propel, you know, that Spazzer on Turbo Girl, right? So me and Turbo Girl broke up, he decided to get involved. He did all kinds of shit. He even put out a diss track to me. Mm-hmm. Call me a nasty bitch. And then said that Turbo said, said in the song that Turbo said, I have a small dick, and blah, 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 and all such. So I wrote a song and recorded it and put it out, and I called it Spazzer Be Mad. You know, Spazzer Be Mad, Spazzer Be Pissed. You know, so that. Well, what ended up happening was, in that song, there's a part of that song where I say, Stop your bitch ass pride, and you're like Jesse Slaughter, and when she turns 18, I'll be top stuff with your daughter. Oh, damn. <laughs> you know, the I got that line was because I had a bully in high school. Uh, not a bully. I had a few kids that would try to pick it on me in middle school and in high school, and I'd take the shit out of them a couple times. But, like, one of those people that just doesn't stop fucking with you, right? We just get fucked made at each other. We got a very nice, right? I thought they just did a day about that. So anyway, years later, I end up with this girl, and I live up for months, up here every night doing whatever. And one day we're laying in bed right after a wild sex session, and we're laying there, naked and sweaty, and, and we're talking, and she asked me, she goes, I wonder if he went to school, because she was, she was a few years younger than me and shit. And uh, she goes, I wonder if he went to school with my uh, brother, because he's much your age. And I said, who's your brother? And she told me who her brother's name was. And she said, it was that fucking asshole who said, fuck you with me forever. And I was like, really? Fucking live for me, goddammit. I'm fucking this motherfucker's sister. I don't for shit right now. You know? So that's where I got that. That's where I came up with that line. Like, with, like you know, fuck with me now, but if you got a daughter or a sister, she will turn 18. And I will fuck her then. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where I got that line from. That's why I came up with that line. But anyway, months go by, and Spazzer hits me up while I was on Blog TV, actually. Talking shit, talking about my song and how mediocre it was and all this other shit. And I was explaining to him about how his song was worse than mine. Even if my song to him was mediocre, it was still better than what he put out. You know, so how do you feel? Even mediocre is better than you. And he was getting pissed. So what he said was, oh, by the way, that line in your song where you said about my daughter, you do know that when I see you, I'm going to kick the shit out of you for saying that, blah, blah, blah. And it was like, please, motherfucker, bring it. And he ended up, out of nowhere, he started saying, Turbo said this, this, and this. 
Well, I was on Block TV. I called Turbo Girl. I had her on speaker. She didn't know she was on speaker. And I said, hey, Spazzer's saying you said this, this, and this, and this. And she's like, Spazzer's fucking lying. I never said any of that. And everybody on Block TV is listening and laughing at him for lying. And I was like, well, I know you didn't say any of that, but is any of that true? I mean, you'd be totally honest with me. Like, you know, like, did you really think my dick was smaller? Or did you really think this? She's like, oh, God, no. It's actually quite the opposite. Like, holy shit. She was, like, praising me for a second. And everyone was like, that's a tip right there. <laughs> so fucking called her and tells her to hang up the phone because I bought blog TV putting her on blast and talking shit about her and all this other shit. And I was like, this motherfucker. So I finally, me and her were talking. She called Spazzer on three-way, and Spazzer was talking all this shit, saying he had family in Arizona, and he could be down there tomorrow. And if I say one more thing about his daughter, he will be down here tomorrow. And he's like, tell me, I don't, tell me you don't fucking believe me. And I'm like, bitch, I don't believe you. How about that? And he said some other shit. And then he said, if you ever say one more thing about my daughter, 24 hours, it will not say, it'll take you up 24 hours to get your fucking house, and I will fuck your shit up. And then he called it a blood talk radio that one day. And he had also said some shit that the only reason I said uh, when she turned 18 line is because I didn't want to speak like a pedophile uh, to uh, the public and blah, blah, blah. And I don't, I don't have the balls to say some real shit in public. And if I say one more thing about his daughter, he's going to... He's going to be here 24 hours because he's got mafia family everywhere. So, in a public forum, I challenged him. I said, okay, Sam, there's a lot about this. Okay? I don't believe you'll come to Arizona, but here's the fucking incentive for you. I won't wait till she's 18. I'll be up at your house next week. I'm going to kill your wife. I'm going to kill you. And then I'm going to cut your face off. I'm going to wear it as a mask. And then as I with your daughter, I'm going to yell, who's your daddy, bitch? How about that? Is that incentive for you to come to Arizona now? What's up? Bitch. Of course, he still has it. But he challenged me, so I answered. And that was all there is to it. Am I going to kill him? Fuck no. Am I going to kill his wife? Fuck no. Am I really going to rape a four year old? Fuck no. <laughs> but, you know, some motherfucker want to throw up his fucking in my face and say, like, bring it, bitch. Oh, okay. Motherfucker, what's up? I will publicly say something you say I don't have the balls to say and see what you do. Let's see what the fuck you do. And you know what he did? He sat at his house and pulled his little witchcraft books out and put a supposed hex on me. Which I don't know how this hex is supposed to be working because I just got a raise at work and I'm moving to a bigger place. I just got my keys to my new place today. I, I still don't know what this hex is supposed to do to me. But, you know... It seems the total opposite. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, lesson of the day. Don't fuck with CPN. That's the lesson <laughs> we have learned. And, um, let's see. Okay, this other question. You've been receiving a lot of hate. Not just from haters. Not, not like how you used to. It was just only haters, but now it's from juggalos, juggalettes, and mostly anybody. You're receiving hate from anybody. Now, are you enjoying that? Like, are you, like, what is your feelings on that? Like, everyone hating on you now, including people who are part of this juggalo family or juggalo community, whatever people like to call it nowadays. Well, see, this is the thing. I'm not going to sit here and say, like, like I'm enjoying it. Like, I'm all bitten my arms up, and every time I get hated on, uh, part of me part of me that was dead inside suddenly springs for life and has a lot of energy, you know, or anything like that. I'm not going to say that's the case. However, I haven't lost a second of sleep about it either. You know, it's mm -hmm. just, it's, hate or love is whatever to me. Um, if people are going to hate me, they're going to hate me. You know, I, I had no doubt in my mind that all these tactics that would come out in public, people would hate me for. I, I had no fucking doubt in my mind. You know, it was like, oh, shit. 
Like, you know, I even said to myself, oh, my God, I'm going to get so much fucking shit for this. But it's whatever. Because this is the thing. Like, I remember I watched your interview with Blue. And Blue said, you know, with all the hate, I get a lot of love, too. I get more love than I do hate. So, you know, it's all good. This is the thing. I make YouTube videos strictly because I like it. It's a hobby of mine. There could be 10 million people who love my shit. Or there could be 10 people who kind of like my shit. It does not matter to me. As long as I speak something and I know somebody heard it, I'm fine. Whether they agreed with me or not, I don't care. You know, I just like the fact that I can speak in opinion or I can make some kind of comedy video or something like that. I can put it on, and people are looking at it. People are watching it. Whatever they do from that point on means nothing to me. Oh, I loved your video. I hated your video. I agree with what you're doing. I don't agree with what you're doing. Okay, fine. Whatever. It's not... I don't come... You know what I don't come on and tell people, stop hating on me. The amount of subscribers I have, that just happens to be the amount of subscribers I have. It does not matter. It will not make a difference to my day-to-day -day life. You know, I, so I honestly just do not care. That, that's, the, that's the difference. I mean, a lot of other people, like Boxer Ash, you know, will, you know, they get hated on, and they, their minds fucking crack. I mean, we saw that ambassador. What happened to him? Holy shit. Like, what the fuck? I mean, his fat naked lover came out at the end and everything, <laughs> like, what the fuck? He cracked all of that shit. And then, like, we saw Twisted Ash doing fucking karate in the parking lot. People were able to get a and have something to say about that. Like, holy fucking shit. These people went crazy. His party. <laughs> I blocked the entire party because I just don't care. You know what I'm saying? But I child play it. That's not, I am childish. You know what I mean? Why? Yeah, it's funny to me. That's all it is. It's funny to me. It's not, it's not anything special. I didn't have people. Oh, you're losing your credit, bitch. Credit? What the fuck are you talking about, bitch? What is, my cred? Are you serious? Wow. Oh, my God. I'm getting hated on YouTube. You know, you know what I find funny, so... These same people, like if you date somebody over YouTube, if you get love over YouTube, um, or any of that, they'll call you a loser for doing that. But as soon as you get hated all over YouTube, they're like throwing it in your face like, yeah, bitch, you're getting hated. That means something. Wait, what? You know, you can't have it both ways, fool. Like, seriously. If it doesn't mean anything to get love over YouTube, then it shouldn't mean anything to get hate over YouTube. That's the whole thing. YouTube is nothing more to me than a fucking website that allows me to upload videos. What I choose to make those videos about is whatever I choose to make them about. Whoever likes them, likes them. Whoever does it, does it. And that's where it ends. You know, there is. I, I have no conspiracy. I have nothing where, like, I want to build an army or I want to do this or I want to do that. The fact that people got love for me, the fact that people got respect for me, the fact that people will see me at the gathering and be like, oh, my God, it's CPN. I guess you can say that's a bonus, but it's never planned. It's cool, you know, but it's not something I, I absolutely need to live. It's just fun. It's, it's like a luxury thing, you know? It's like a bad part, I guess. Hell yeah, man. And, um, you know, I mean, it's like what I said. It's like what I told a lot of people. This is not the first time you dealt with hate, you know, especially when it comes from jugglers, you know? I mean, a lot of jugglers have got pissed off at you because of your previous videos, like, um, about the Tila Tequila incident, the, what really happened at the gathering with Tila Tequila. A lot of jugglers started hating on you. They said you're annoying. They said you're trying to act black and shit like that. I mean, this is not the first time you dealt with hate. I don't know what the funniest thing. They're like, oh, why do you got that finger on your head? You try to act black. I don't know what the fucking my hair was so fucked up that it was like, I have not put the hair on this playing video. Because my hair is so nappy because my father's black. 
And I thought, let me snipe black. But I, my father looked exactly like me, just with let me snipe skin tone. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My father is the blackest, the biggest motherfucker he's ever met. You know what I'm saying? My dad was like, I mean, Southern Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where my father's from and his family. They got the access. They do the gumbo every fucking Sunday after church. They fucking drink the moonshine and play poker. And they got the whole fucking thing. I was introduced to porn rolls by my fucking cousin. My fucking, my Aunt Sharon, my father's sister's son. I had to choose the corner of the show. Like, what the fuck? That's cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, some of my cousins are rappers. How black are you fucking get? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well, I uh, love my chicken and watermelon. I just want to put that out there too. Great squid and soda is a fucking shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> Damn. And, uh... yeah, I, I don't want to hate for that. Um, I do a lot of hate for my joke videos too. Like I got, I got one called CPN versus Jamie Madron, where I was saying uh, I wanted to kill Jamie Madron because uh, he he put DC above Marvel, and he said he preferred Star Trek over Star Wars. And mm. I was like, that Trek DC motherfucker. Of course, it's a joke, you know. But some people are like really offended by it. And then I got another video called How to Be a Juggalo, which should be obviously a joke. But, like, people are fucking retarded. You know what I'm saying? I get so much hate on that one, too. I just find it funny, though. You know, I, I, this is not the first time I've dealt with hate. It definitely won't be the last. And I just think it's funny. Like, I don't even, like, people say, oh, I just take it with a grain of salt. I don't even take it with a grain of salt. I just laugh at the whole situation. I shoot it off and we'll do what I'm doing. You know, I barely even look at YouTube half the time. Mm, yeah. And um, I will say this. Now, after I got the whole story from Miss Juggalette on our last interview, um, she told me what happened between you and Crazy, and automatically I could have made a video about my thoughts and all that, but here's the thing why I didn't want to make a video. Number one, it's none of my business, you know? I mean, I have more stuff to worry about than people beefing over Star Wars, who shot first and all that. I mean... It was none of my business. It was simply something that was yours and Crazy's business and something that y'all two should just handle it out and stuff like that, you know? I mean, I'm not up for choosing sides. That's never my thing. I'm never up to choosing sides with two people who I'm cool with, you know? I mean, that's my number one rule. I never choose sides with people who I'm cool with. With two people I'm cool with, I'm never going to choose sides. And... You know, I have a I have a saying. I have a saying, and it's called, "What you shove up your own ass is your own business." Meaning, um, you know, what you do is your business. But if you're gonna put it out, if you're gonna put it out in public and actually say you did this, you did this, you did this, then you're offering people your their opinions towards what you're doing. You know, and I mean, I mean, I have not lost respect for either of y'all. You know, I haven't lost respect. What I mean, what y'all said, what you what you and Crazy said, yeah, that that was like uncalled for. But have I lost respect for y'all? Nah, I mean, respect is earned, and I mean, you have earned it. I mean, over watching your videos before all this went down, you earned my respect, and you still have my respect. Crazy, he's another person that got me into YouTube, and he still has my respect since the first time I saw his videos. And I mean, I really hope. Like, you know, y'all settle down to differences, and, and at the end, um, at the end, y'all could just look back, re look back and say, you know what, you know what I did, I know what I did, and you know what, it's all in the past, and we should just look forward to today and tomorrow, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, <laughs> we'll see, um, we'll see whether that, um, if that is to happen. I mean, I guess you could say we'll see whatever goes on. Like, I, I do know that you know, one thing, though, is that, I mean, you might get hate for saying what you just said, 
uh, because there's been a few people that have came out and said, like, I don't agree with what you did, CPN, but I love your fucking videos. So this changes nothing on my side. And you got these other people who are trying to be this regime against me, like, attacking those people. Like, Paul, oh, so you're a fucking child rapist. This whole record is like, dude, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, it's, like, stop. Like, you know, so, I mean, it, it's all, it's all whatever to me, you know. And I, I just find it funny, and I, I'm going to continue to make videos as long as, as long as there's an audience, I will make videos. That's, that's how it works. You know what I mean? As long as there's an audience, I will create a piece of the audience to watch. Exactly. And on to the final question that everyone knows after I interview them. Before the interview gets done, there's one more question I need to ask. Is there anything you would like to say to everybody and anybody that is listening to this interview? You have the whole floor to yourself. You can say whatever you want. It's all yours and you can start whenever you want. Well, this is, this is the one thing I'm going to say. I I look at people on YouTube and I watch people's videos for one reason and one reason only. If their videos find a, if, if I find a certain type of entertainment within their videos, that's what I watch. That's pretty much it. I don't care what that person does on the internet. Fucking shit. I, I'm not gay and I don't enjoy things up my ass. But my favorite YouTuber of all time had a video leaked of chocolate syrup and a banana being shoved up in his ass, and he fucking loved it. But guess what? I don't fucking care. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so maybe you guys have seen this display of me doing some fucked up shit to people. Whatever the fuck. It shouldn't matter. So this is the one thing I'm going to say. I don't care about anyone's respect, but the one thing I, the one thing I will say is what I do not want you to respect me for it, and I don't want you to have any respect for me because of the because of the fact that I'm a juggler. I don't want you to have any respect for me because of what you may or may not think about what I do in my day to day life. I don't want you to have any respect for me because you feel like you're obligated to. If you ever have any type of respect for me, it should be for one reason and one reason only. Because my mindset and my opinions on life are in sync with yours and you understand it. Other than that, you should not respect me for any other reason. So, with that said, if you're going to lose respect for me for what I've done to somebody else that had nothing to do with my YouTube videos, I've never really wanted your respect in the first place. If you're going to lose respect for me for any other reasons that I've made, other than the quality of my YouTube videos and the way I present myself and the way I, I think about things, is there a way to respect me for me for any other reason other than that? I've never really wanted to respect in the first place. So you could fucking take something that I literally threw away and put on a long time ago. Uh, other than that, um, I am CPN. I will always be CPN. And yeah, and I guess I can announce this on your interview, too. Uh, next month, I will actually be bringing back my two hours BTR show, the CPM show, with the two hour, with the actual two hour show. So, whoever is going to want to tune into that, they can check that out, and details will be set out later. I also. There's a possibility, right, man, maybe later down the line you might want to do another interview or something because I do have a huge announcement coming out, an extreme huge announcement coming out in the near future. Well, I'm always down to interview anyone, and, I mean, you returning back to interview with the Juggalo would definitely be, you're definitely welcome to come back you're definitely welcome to have an interview, and, you know, I'll be ready. All righty. Well, I had a lot of fun, and anybody else out there that ever does interviews, I like interviews. So you hit me up anytime, 
you, Rain Man, or anyone else can hit me up any time, and we can do some good with that. Hell yeah, and this has been the final conclusion of the interview with the Juggalo with CPN. And thank you, CPN, for once again for um, volunteering to having me interview you. And um, hope y'all enjoy it. Hope y'all have a good night's sleep. And remember the number one rule: don't fuck with CPN. Don't just <laughs> just don't. Thanks for the invitation. You have a good one. All right, you too, man. All right. And.